And we go from the silence to a very emotional, powerful uh, moments, which are incredibly releasing. I think it's uh, amazing. It should really get everybody to come to a, a symphony concert just once. And I think that the way we play, that it would be an experience which would match any rock concert. Oh, it's so rich. It has so very many different aspects. You can close your eyes and you see everything before your eyes. It's not even necessary to know the chapters which Richard Strauss wrote over every single section. It's extremely dynamic. You have so very many different experiences of sound and the score, and every single part is powerful, with images, and full of images. It's much too good to be a film score without a film, how it's often described. It doesn't need the film. Usually an Alpine symphony is loud, and when it's loud it's supposed to get louder, and then the conductor is doing like this, so everybody's playing louder, and then it's followed by a crescendo, and you're getting louder and louder and louder. And at a certain point, you can't play louder, obviously, and then everything is just loud, and everything is just equal. And this is really not the case with this recording. The second thing is, I don't know a recording which is so detailed and so colorful. It's this incredibly detailed, um, frustrating, fun, these recording productions are very special, that's for sure. First of all, good sound quality is when music works. When music transports emotion and when music transports images and when music is structured and when you can distinguish everything what's in the music. And, of course, when music is sexy. It comes from a good production and a personal sound from the production and of course an equipment and a playback equipment that is suited to the taste of the listener, what he wants to hear, as good sound quality is a personal thing. It can be a kitchen radio, it can be a high-end equipment, it just has to transport everything what's in the music. We can interact, I can tell Lisa something how we have the feeling it should sound and she can say, no, I have a different feeling. I think this is a very important part of the process. It's the feedback that a musician gets from himself. If a musician wants to repeat a part or is not happy with it or wants to play it in another way, then we just do it. That there's no reason why we shouldn't do it and if we don't have the time for that, then we shouldn't record. These Strauss recordings are really special because you take the time and the, the, with the kindness and the insistence and your patience with us and uh, it's a very special atmosphere, I'd say. As things get uglier in the world, I would say that our job is even more important now. And all of the predictions that it's going to disappear, I just don't believe. But I do think it's important to be accessible as a, as a, as a symphony orchestra I do, do believe it is important to play the masterpieces as well as the new repertoire. The experience of sitting in a room where 100 people are playing their hearts out is something that's very special, uh, even if, whether it's pop or rock or classical. And um, the more that we are authentic with our classical music, the more detailed we are, the more we dare take risks, the more that we will be able to communicate the different emotions which people need especially when things are not so good. <laughs> <laughs>